Hi, my name is Marcy Morrison, and I am an Associate Director in the UC San Diego Career Center, and I will be today's UC Career Talks host. And I'll be interviewing Neville Billamoria, who's been connected to the UC community for over 40 years and is a leader in our community through the work that he does at Mission Federal Credit Union, as well as the many board, volunteer, and speaking events that he's taken on in his commitment to making a difference. Welcome, Neville. Thank you, Marcy. Can you first share with us your connection to the UC community? Wow, yeah, it takes us back a bit. Um, actually, not far from where we're sitting right now. Uh, I was in a line at orientation and met my wife in line, the second person I met on campus. She was not my wife at the time, obviously, but um, <laughs> uh, we ended up in the same dorm together, and here we are with a 25-year-old and a 21-year-old many moons later, so that was my first connection. Um, next was obviously where I lived, which was uh, Tayago. I, I was at John Muir College. Um, that's, that's where I went to school and um, built a deep bond and relationship with people that to this day we still connect. In fact, a bunch of men just got on a call this Monday and were um, connect, reconnecting deeply at a, at a very authentic level, let's just put it that way. So Tayoga was kind of our tribe and um, our peeps and I uh, had a lot of fun there. Next was in my, with my degree and uh, I credit uh, Dr. Herb Schiller a comm professor at the time, I was a communication major, go figure, um, uh, uh, for he, teaching me how to think, teaching me how to be a critical thinker. And so that, that would be the third place. Um, I started a rec club that turned into a rec class, which is part of the wisdom traditions, teaching martial arts, yoga, meditation, which I've been doing now for 41 years. Um, been on the alumni board, just termed off of that after 14 years in the UC San Diego alumni board. And I've served um, various deans and even the career center uh, uh, leader at one point in an advisory capacity. So there's a bunch of tentacles that connect me deeply to the institution and almost literally where we're sitting. Thank you so much, Neville. In fact, your name is even on the plaque in the UC Career Center. I saw your, I saw your name in it there. Is? So your, your <laughs> imprint around the campus is definitely felt and I've had the pleasure of also taking one of your martial arts class. So I really appreciate all that you do. And I'd love to learn a little bit more about what do you, how does connecting your passion and purpose, what does that, what does that mean to you? I guess I'll, I'll use the, um, there was some research done on the blue zones where people live, you know, into their hundreds. And there's several of those all around the world, including Loma Linda, California, where actually my dad was a practicing physician for almost 50 years. Um, and what they found is, uh, I'm gonna use the Okinawan example because we talk martial arts, there's this concept of ikigai. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where what you love, what the world needs, what they're willing to pay you for, um, what matters most, all kind of intersect. And one of the things that they're, they're finding out, which I think speaks to um, your question, is when you're able to align those aspects of your personhood, then passion and purpose really don't just come together, they explode. And that leads to a longer life, a happier life, a more fulfilling sense of who you are, uh, being able to manifest your purpose. So I would use Ikigai as my shorthand. And I'm not saying he's an Ikigai, I'm saying <laughs> Ikigai, it's a different concept. Um, but I think that's a, a, a good way to think about it. Because if, if any of those things are out of alignment, it doesn't kind of work, right? So you love what you do, but they don't want to pay you for it. Or they pay you well, but you hate what you do. Or, you know, just, all those have to kind of line up. Yeah, I love that. I 100% agree with that. I've, I love that methodology because it really makes it simple to really understand that. And I know that you embody that. And I would love for you to share those in pivotal moments in your life where you connected your passion to purpose so we can illustrate that for the viewers. Yeah, well, um, the road to success is always under construction, right? So <laughs> it's iterative. So when people say, well, yeah, how, how did you get where you're at? It was um, successive approximation. There was not one, you know, I didn't get up one day deciding oh, this is who I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, but over time, influenced by growing up in both the East and West, so bicultural, um, having a focus on communications uh, and values. I always wanted to work somewhere where the values mattered. I wanted to do work that mattered. Um, and, and then also by deduction, figuring out what didn't work, right? So mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I, I, I knew I'm not that great at math or the hard sciences, as an example. So um, by choosing to lean in on where I had the, be again, strengths, talents, skills, a passion, um, and uh, maneuvering the difficult times, because we're all gonna run into challenges, yeah. and so then how do you show up? Do you uh, 
Um, they say that adversity breeds character. I don't think that's true. I think adversity reveals character. Mm. And so trying to, trying to build again on the character and competencies uh, that um, the wisdom tr traditions focus on. We, we, in the West, really focus on skills and, and competencies, but I think we need to attend a little bit more to character. Yes, 100%. That is so, that is so true. And I know that from knowing you for a long time, Neville, that life hasn't always been like an easy road. Like you said, it's always under construction, right? So um, uh, getting through those challenging moments, I'm curious, like what has sustained you throughout your career during those times? Hmm. I, I guess staying true to my knitting and um, recognizing that this too shall pass and that uh, if I don't get overly attached to the outcome and stay in the journey and take a win-learn rather than a win-lose mentality, try to keep a growth mindset, try to be a lifelong learner. What's the lesson here? What, how can I be better from this? Or what is this moment teaching me? Um, and then it's, at the end of the day, it's not about me, right? It's about all of us stakeholders that we serve. Mm -hmm. So what sustains me in difficult times is to keep an eye on the prize and say, what, what is the impact? Uh, what is the goal, aim, purpose? And how is this going to impact other people and positively affect other people? And so then it makes it a little easier to ride the rough seas or go through the stormy patches or whatever may be coming up, either personally or professionally. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I, I know when I introduced you earlier on that we had talked about, you know, the difference that you do make within the community. I'd love for you to share a little bit more about what you are doing and have been doing, like your, your passions, where you've made that difference and where you continue to make that difference. Well, yeah. So again, back to your very first question, the connections to UC San Diego. And um, I felt like, you know, in those div most pivotal years of my maturing, if I can dare say I matured, but <laughs> air quotes, uh, they, they taught me how to think, I built connection, I built efficacy, and so I, I feel a obligation in the healthiest sense of the word to give back, uh, to, to pay it forward, pay it back. Um, I think education is the great leveler, and, and I think, unfortunately, demography still determines our destiny in many cases. If you look at uh, uh, our most underestimated and I prefer that language to marginalized or underserved others. I think language matters. Again, I, I'm a comm major. Uh, I think our, serving our most underestimated brothers and sisters um, is a really important thing. So with COVID at Mission Fed, we pivoted to homelessness, uh, mm -hmm. the unsheltered, and food insufficiency. Because it wasn't that everybody was in the same boat. Uh, we were. Some of us didn't have a boat. Some of us didn't even have a freaking life raft or a life jacket. So to say we're all in the same boat, I think, was a misnomer. So it's it's so so what what inspires me what um, I try to lean in on is trying to make sure that everybody's feeling valued, heard, and belong. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that was growing up in India. The Indian kids said I was English. The English kids said I was Indian because my mom is English. Uh, and so then what was I? And so I reconciled that by saying, well, I want I, as I turn my stumbling blocks into stepping stones, I want to make sure other people feel valued and heard and belong. So that was way before. DEI or EDI or JEDI with justice or IDEA with access. I mean, these are more modern um, language for the same sentiment, which is just apply the platinum rule, do to others as they would have done unto them. Great. Thank you so much, Neville. Um, I know that, especially in the Career Center, we, we have so many young people that will come to us and get so overwhelmed. Like, how do I connect the dots, right? How can I do an ikigai? How can I connect my passion to purpose? And even people within the whole UC community wondering, right, that they may be feeling really lost and thinking, how can I do that? So I would love if you could share any wisdom that you have for somebody that may be struggling, whether that's a student or adult in transition or anyone that may really need that gem of your wisdom to help them on that path. Well, it's not my wisdom, but uh, I'll share a couple thoughts about it. Um, and first of all, I, I love the idea that transitions are when we're most alive. Mm -hmm. So as difficult as those transitions might be, um, those really invite us to lean in and say, you know, what, what is the best and highest use in this moment? I think the pandemic, uh, economic uncertainty, the social reckoning that we're all experiencing has impacted all of us. You know, we talk about the great resignation, quiet quitting, all these uh, shifts in the world of work and our relationship to work. I like the great rethink. I think that's the best one I've heard. Um, and I, 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 it's given us an opportunity to really 
a question in the healthiest sense of the conversation. You know, who am I and what work do I want to do and how does that matter? I think that, re that is eminently relatable, not just to young people who are trying to find their next, but to people that have been on this journey for a while and trying to sense make of um, the next normal or whatever it's going to be, right? So for young people, I would say uh, story, state, and script. You, we all have a story. Um, the script is how you interpret your story. Mm -hmm. So, and the state is what your, your, your current, how you're showing up in this moment. And I would invite um, all people, but particularly young people, to look deeply at what their story is and what they'd, how they'd like that story to end. If their life was a jigsaw puzzle box, what is the cover of the box going to look like? And then what pieces do they need to put into that box to um, affect that? And if it's a, like a many piece jigsaw puzzle box, oftentimes we start with the corner pieces because that helps us to get grounded, right? So then metaphorically, what are the corner pieces for each individual? And if you put those in place and you're clear about what those are, is it community, is it family, is it work, is it avocational? Um, and then you start building out the, the puzzle and you may find you have a few missing pieces. So then you gotta go add those pieces to the puzzle. Uh, and you have the light, right and luxury to change the cover of that box anytime you bloody want. So um, back to story and script, I would say don't um, behave into a script that somebody else wrote for you. Mm -hmm. And if you need to redesign the cover of that box to be the person you want to be, uh, and that would be my advice. I love that, Neville. Thank you so much for sharing that. I've never heard the puzzle box analogy, and I love the fact that I think that a lot of times what happens is people get stuck. Like, that is the cover of my box, and I can't get out of my box. So I love that you're saying you have permission to change your box. Neville, I would love for you to share a little bit more about the work that you are doing in the community. I know we had met several years ago through the work that we were doing to support youth, and that was only one of many things that you were doing to really move the needle on changing the way that education is done and the way that people learn as well. So I'd love to sh for you to share more about what you've been doing in that area and other areas that you're making a difference in the community. Thanks, Marcy. So uh, as I said earlier, I think education is a super um, powerful lever in, in transforming lives, right? And, and But that comes both uh, in formal and informal education. It comes in curricular and co-curricular. Uh, and it comes in life skills as well as the world of work. So it's, it's, it's more than just degrees. And, and increasingly today, it's about skills, not degrees. Um, in my 21 years at Mission Federal Credit Union, I, I joke I'm the non-finance guy on the executive team. I talked about my math issues earlier. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, I, I, it, and I said that I share that values are super important to me. So I, I want to, I work for a not-for-profit institution that is not beholden just to stockholders, but is beholden to their member owners. Mm -hmm. And our focus, we were born on a bar desk in the county office of Ed building, so our focus, primary focus and field of membership was education. Mm -hmm. So we serve a lot of K through 12 educational partners, local school districts, and then places like K's where we met, um, other boards that are focused on education, both public and private. So education has been the area of interest and focus for me. And again, with an inflection on uh, underestimated populations in particular. So how can we stand up uh, the next generation of leaders in education that with the right conscious leadership and purpose-driven culture can engage and inspire all their educators to help the next group of um, young people coming through the system. So, and that, that's about transforming education. It's not just about um, operating it the way it's been run for the last hundred years or so, right? That old factory model of um, just putting us in seats and all digesting the same content and then pushing us through the system, uh, that we know that's already, that's obsolete. Um, we're not to the point of precision education where it's completely aligned with our genome or you know, our, our unique DNA, but somewhere in the middle there should be some personalized education. So it went from uh, education is in the business of teaching, so we did our teaching, if you didn't learn it, that's not our problem. To education actually is about learning. It's, uh, so you need to flex your teaching style to ensure that the students get what you're trying to do. And increasingly is moving to um, learner-centered education. Mm -hmm. One of the few places a young person can choose what exactly what they want to do is in the library. 
And it used to be a place of curation, now it's a place of connection. But that's where you can start and you can pick up a book on music and connect that to math. You can, so, you, so how can we keep enlivening the educational construct? Like Einstein said, I never try to teach anybody anything, I only try to create the conditions in which they can learn. So what conditions do we need to create in an educational environment to foster a whole person um, experience? That floats my boat, that flips my script, that lights my fuse, that, that's where I'd like to put energy in. That's fantastic, Neville. And what I love about you is that this, in, along the theme of passion and purpose, like it's infused in everything that you do, and including even on the corporate, nonprofit, side like you've been part of a lot of initiatives to inject more passion and purpose into the workplace too is there anything you want to share along those lines as well well i've, I've done tried social experiments like i founded the first chamber of purpose in the country instead of the chamber of commerce because again if, if we're going to have people show up authentically with their full self what, what is what does that look like and it looks like authentic connection so not just networking and speed dating but actually getting to know the person you're with it's about championing that kind of work, being a positive deviant and saying purpose-driven leaders and purpose-driven cultures can make a difference and the data does suggest that. Um, and it's about um, uh, coaching. If, again, it's, if it's a life, if it's a skill, it can be taught. If it can be taught, then we need to model it. And so with those three C's of champion, coach, and connect, um, the Chamber of Purpose um, was an idea to advance this more purpose-driven orientation, which I think we're all yearning for, hence the great rethink. Yes, for sure. And it was such an honor to be part of those meetings. And it was so inspiring to see you bring together all the different sectors of San Diego and see how hungry, like you were saying, people were to connect together for this shared cause. So anything coming for the future that you're seeing on the rethink for San Diego? or You know, let's keep on keeping on with the values, but then you pivot to meet the moment and keep asking that, um, like with stress, you know, the old question was, can I cope? The new, the new question is what matters most right now? And so if we can keep reframing, have, take that, uh, for whatever reason in the West, we tend to venerate action and vilify reflection. And I think back to uh, conscious or purpose or any of that, finding our, our authentic self, we need to do a little more reflecting. And so if, if we're able to honor and take that breath and go, Instead of saying, can I handle this right now, asking what matters most right now, that's a higher order question. And again, critical thinking should invite us to ask better questions because that's how we get better answers. I completely agree with that 100%. It is about the question, right? If we keep, like you're saying, flip the script, right? If we keep following the same script, we're never going to evolve and change. So how do we ask yourself better questions and learn how to do things differently? So I completely agree with that. And I know a big part of your uh, I guess holistic way of living as a, a good way I guess we could look at it is your martial arts practice. I know you briefly mentioned that before, but um, is there anything specifically that you'd like to share about martial arts, about the connection for yourself and then the pleasure that you receive from sharing that with other people as well? When the wisdom traditions of 2,500 years ago and the quantum medicine or most latest thinking in neuroscience from the last 2,500 milliseconds start lining up on the same stuff, then I pay attention. And I think we've unfortun unfortunately um, privileged evidence-based thinking, which is certainly an important scientific method, uh, and we've short-shrifted intuition and other ways of knowing. And I think the wisdom traditions put those back into balance. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not an either or, it's a both and. Um, we, uh, we, you know, we're sitting here on the unceded territory of the Kumeya Nation. Mm -hmm. um, we live in, if we understand where we are physically in space and time in this moment, this is a tri-national region we're sitting in with the U.S., Mexico, and the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. There's more indigenous tribes in California than any other state and more indigenous tribes in San Diego than any other part of California. But people don't appreciate that. So what wisdom, uh, whether it's about climate catastrophe, dealing with fires, all the challenges we're, we're facing, can we benefit from and learn from our indigenous elders and then map that to Western science? I think the wisdom traditions provide us with that conduit and uh, 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 asset that are hidden in plain sight. And it's up to us to 
polish that carbon and produce diamonds from it and respect our planet and love one another. Um, and I think that's what, ironically, what martial arts has brought me to, has le led me to, not to kicking butt and taking names. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, I think that, you know, what I see a lot of times too is that whether it's a student again or somebody in transition, that missing piece a lot of times is the purpose part. Like you're saying, beyond yourself. What is that difference that you can, the contribution that you can make? And to me, a lot of that time does come through reflection, right? That you need to get still, get quiet, listen to that voice within, and then also think about, look around, where is the difference that you can make? So I really appreciate you sharing all those tips and wisdom about that, because I think a lot of people want to figure it out, but they just, they can't seem to find the tools to help that map, map out that box cover for their, for their puzzle. And we don't need to know, you know, not knowing is, is, a, is the basis for all learning, right? In the expert's mind, there's one right answer. In the beginner's mind, there's infinite possibilities. So again, it's reframing. Okay, I don't know. That's okay. But where, wh where am I headed? And what's going to get me there? Um, again, a conscious leadership framework is about being open, being curious, and being kind. And back to the neuroscience and wisdom traditions, there's different energy centers. The Chinese in Qigong talk about Jin, your seat of courage your bias for right action, qi, which is your empathy and compassion, shen, which is wisdom, not smarts. We all know many people, including in the UC system, that are so smart that they're stupid, right? But um, wisdom is different than uh, smarts. And so our, our, if we can, neuroscience says we have intelligence, not the triune brain um, from the 60s, but there's wisdom in your gut, in your biome. There's wisdom, heart wisdom, empathy and compassion again. And then there's the neocortex and you know, our modern, more modern instruments, right? So, how, but do we do use them all, or do we all live all live up here? And then, how can we open up um, this intelligence? And then, how, and then, at the seat of it is all uh, coming from our core and our center is the courage to do the right thing, even when nobody's watching. Uh, Neville, earlier you mentioned about the rethink. Could you share a little bit more about what your thoughts are around that? Yeah, so early on in the pandemic, we were having all these people quitting in droves, right? So it became the great resignation, and there was quiet quitting. So people were there, but they were really not engaged in their work. And then there's, there's a trend right now that, you know, do as little as possible on a Monday. And, you know, there's all these different re reactions and responses to the condition we find ourselves. I, I brought up the great rethink, which is not my idea. It's either, it's a, I think a Harvard professor who wrote about it. But I, I, I like that because it's, it's, let's not waste a crisis. It's saying if we find ourselves in this circumstance, rather than lament it or check out, maybe it's an opportunity to check in. And if I'm going to check in, then let's check in with a different set of conditions than I, w I was using in the past. Because we're not, we find ourselves in a different place. If you always did what you always done, you always get what you always got. So if you don't like what you're getting, change it. And so the great rethink for me is that opportunity for each and every one of us in our relationship to our work, and in many cases that our role is not our identity, but in many cases, our work life is a super important part of how we see ourselves, where we get our esteem, our perceived value, our contribution. Um, but uh, what's to stop us from revisiting that whole question from our most authentic self and ensuring that all of our needs are being met? If we have mercenary um, management and people are not loyal to organizations, why are organizations need to ask themselves, what are they doing to create those conditions, not what's wrong with the employee? You look at engagement data around the world, Gallup's been studying it for 20 years, 10 people are rowing a boat, three are rowing or rowing like fiends, five are neutral, they're watching the other guys rowing, and two to three are toxically disengaged, in fact, they're trying to sabotage the boat. That's what the data suggests. Now, is that the world of work we want to leave for the next generation? Again, the employer could say, what is wrong with these people? Eight to five, half of them are just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. At five o'clock, they light up. They're on the sports fields. They're in their places of worship. They're uh, you know, volunteering left, right, and center. Where was this person eight to five? Wrong question. The right question, or better, higher order question is, what are you doing to preclude that person from showing up from eight to five? That's the great rethink. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important, this rethink, for the 
passion and purpose for the individual, but the passion and pr- purpose for the whole collective. I love that. And like, I love how you always talk about reframing the question too. It's like, what do we value as individuals? What do we value as corporations? What do we have a value as society too? And how do we support each other to having a more holistic life and work filled with passion and purpose? So thanks again, Neville. Thank you, Marcy. And thank all of you for joining us for UC Career Talks. And a special thanks again to Neville for sharing his incredible journey of how he connected his passion to purpose, as well as his wisdom, so you can do the same. We look forward to seeing you again and having the opportunity to meet more inspiring people from the UC community. Thank you.